Center of Trinidad and Tobago presents Light in the Word with Bishop Dr. Victor Gill. When my troubles surround me And I didn't have to despair Lord, you told me That you'll be right there Seem like all my problems Had only just begun But I didn't have to worry they were already one. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, how I love. How I love. Call your name. Calling your name. You can call his name anything. You can call his name anything. Amen. At this time, we want to welcome Dr. Victor Gill as he brings the word of God to us. Put your hands together for him as he comes. Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. My message to you today is search me, O God. Search me, O God. The speaker of this psalm was the illustrious King David. And the picture painted in the psalm is that he came to the sanctuary of God's house. And there he presented a prayer to God that God will expose to him his true condition. Although the psalmist felt that his life was okay, he still was not take, taking anything for granted. He saw the need for a divine confirmation on his life. And so he cried, Search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me. And know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. My first point to you today is search me. Search me. As I said even though the psalmist David felt within himself that he was okay, he decided not to take things at face value. So he comes to the sanctuary of God's house for the divine confirmation and cries, Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Search me. Not my brother." Not my sister, not my neighbor, but me. Search me, O oh God. Then he said these key words, these, these key words. See if there be some wicked way in me. Those words are important. Why? He was not speaking about recognizable sins. But sins that were hidden deep within the heart. Search me, O oh God. Somebody say, search me. He was talking about sins that might take years. Yes, even decades before they manifest. He was talking about sins which no one might have started the journey very well. But sins that can cause 
one's journey to end in shame and defeat. Like the sin of Uzziah, whom the Bible says, when he was strong, he became weak. When he was at his strongest, then he was at his weakest because the Bible said his heart was lifted up. Or like the sin of Korah, whose life ended in rebellion and shame and like Saul. The psalmist David did not trust himself. So he cried, search me. Somebody say search me. Proverbs 28 and verse 26 says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. But whosoever walks wisely will be delivered. And so we all need to pray that prayer like the psalmist David. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We all need to be humble enough to pray like that because we don't know our own hearts. Only God knows the heart. Number two. He said, know my thoughts. Verse 23 of the Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. 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 Those are significant words. What you think about is very significant. Someone said, you must think about what you think about. The greatest battlefield is right here in mind. What you think upon is significant. Many destructive things began with a thought. Beware of unwholesome thoughts that linger in your mind. When you know it's not God, rebuke it immediately. You know it's not God. Say the blood of Jesus. Say Satan, you're a liar. There's a true saying. So a thought. And reap an act. So an act. Reap a practice. So a practice. Reap a habit. So a habit. Reap a character. So a character. Reap a destiny. It all begins with a thought. He said, know my thoughts. Know my thoughts. Satan is a master of planting destructive thoughts. And he likes to sow his destructive seeds in good soil. No one stones a barren tree. Some of you, the devil is on your track because of the call of God on your life. Because you have been running well, Satan, man, you are going too good. But you have to remember that you are who you are by the grace of God and it's, it's not because of you but because of the goodness of God and don't think, it to be, don't think to be more than you really are. So ever so often, you need to come to the sanctuary and say, oh God, search me, search me, oh God. It's me, it's me, oh God, standing in the need of prayer. I ain't all of that. I am what I am. Because of you, your grace and mercy has brought me through. Search me. Somebody say, search me, oh God. 
Not my brother, not my sister, not my friend. Search me, O oh God. Know my thoughts. Know my thoughts. Proverbs 24 and verse 9 says, The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. And if you know your Bible, you will understand that foolishness in the Bible is sin. And so when the Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin, there's a play on words there. What it is actually saying is that the thought of sin is sin. If you think about sin too long, it's a sin. The Bible says shun every appearance of evil. When the enemy comes in with thoughts, use a, use a thought that, it, that is from the word of God. Say, Satan, it is written. He said, Lord, search me and know my thoughts. Know my thoughts. Know my thoughts. That is why you've got to be careful of who you listen to. You've got to be careful. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and verse 20, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companions of fools will be destroyed. You got to be careful of who you listen to. Who is talking to you? Who is your friend? Who you're chatting with on Facebook? Who vibing here? Who are you agreeing with? You got to check your thoughts. Philippians 4 and verse 8 says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And the word thing there, it actually means meditate, meditate, give your mind to these things. So what you meditate upon can affect your life for good or for bad. I want to take it a little further. When the psalmist says, search me, O God, know my heart, try me and know my thoughts. The Hebrew word that is translated thought in the text means not what we might think it means at face value. But what it means is very revealing. And if you understand it, it can help you today. Though that, word, though that word thoughts means a particular kind of thought. Or particular kinds of thoughts. It is the kind of thoughts that can lead to destruction. Know my thoughts, he said. Let me, let me read it for you in the New King James and then the New Living Translation and you'll understand it now. Psalms 139 and verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. The New Living Translation says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. We must beware of anxiety. Anxious thoughts. Because in an anxious moment, you can make a foolish decision. The best of us. True anxiety could take the wrong turn. Oh, I've got to fix this now. I've got to fix I can't wait for God to fix it. I've got to do it for myself. Know my anxious thoughts. 
And what he's saying is, Lord, you look down the road in my life, things that have not surfaced as yet. You look a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, search me, O oh God. Know my anxious thoughts. Number three. See if there be any wicked way in me. See if there be any wicked way in me. You know, we always like to say, I am not wicked. I know there's no wicked way in me. And as long as you have that persuasion, you can't pray this prayer. But as long as you live with a possibility that I ain't all of that. Uh, I have this treasure, but in earthen vessel. It's God who is keeping me. It's God who is guiding me. And but for God, I can do some wicked. I can do some wicked thing. But for his keeping power. And you don't have to come from the other side of the track. As long as you were born in sin. I want to show you something. The revelation is that anxious thoughts are the seeds of wicked ways. Anxious thoughts are the seeds of wicked ways. Anxious thoughts are destructive ways. And let me be honest, many of us can look back at our lives and realize how we were, and remember how we were tempted to make some foolish decisions at an anxious moment. Amen. But God kept you. Anxious thoughts. You see, anxiety and trust cannot go together. Anxiety and obedience to God cannot go together. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. It was because Saul couldn't wait, he lost the kingdom. The Bible says, let patience have its perfect work in you. And the concept of patience there is suffering, enduring sometimes, even wrong. Before you take things in your hands, wait for God who says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said God. Before you open your mouth and put a curse on your own life, before you say the wrong things, before you speak out of time, amen. Or act out of time, amen. You got to say, Lord, search me. Know my anxious thoughts. Glory be to God. Because I want you to know if you trust in him, he will always be on time. If you trust in him, he will come true for you. If you trust in him, he will vindicate you. If you trust in him, you might be knocked down but not knocked out. He will keep you in the race. He will restore you. He will lift you. And when God lift you, no man or devil can pull you down. Anxiety. Anxiety is fear. The, the fear of rejection. The fear of poverty. The fear of the future. Anxiety is apprehensiveness. Unease. Unrest. About many things. It lends to worry. It lends to hastiness. It lends to a lack of trust. All anxieties are the seeds of wickedness, the embryo of wickedness. Many people, I want you to know, don't set out to become 
adulterers. Many people don't set out to become murderers. Many people don't set out to become idolaters. But they just became anxious to have a little more. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, Proverbs 4 and verse 6. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. <laughs> Number four, lead me in the way everlasting. The psalmist prayed, he said, Lord, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Anxieties and anxious thoughts can distract our focus from eternity to time. So he said, lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. You see, listen to me, says, until you live for eternity, you cannot live properly in time. I need to give you some time to think about that. Nobody who is not living for eternity can live correctly in time. Only when your passion and your focus and your view is above will you find the ease and the grace to make decisions below. Because you will make it not in the light of below. Not how it feels below. Not how it looks. Not how people think. Not how people feel. Who think I have arrived. I ain't trying to be better than anybody. I'm looking up. I am seeing a great cloud of witnesses. I am seeing the saints who have arrived. You don't get your little rags and you think you have. I am seeing people in glory. And I want to get there. So this man, if I have to sell this car. It doesn't matter if I have to come out of this relationship. With this, with this daughter of darkness. I want to walk with angels. I want to walk where the saints walk. My eyes are looking upward. And Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen in the end times, that you will be kept and you will not be distracted. He said, look up. Look up. Because we are always moving in the direction of our sight. I can tell who you are by what you look at. Oh yes, he says, Lord, lead me in the way everlasting. Now I want to show you something here. Why did he pray this prayer? Why did he pray this particular line? Lead me in the way everlasting. Notice, lead me in the way. Oh, we know who that is. John 14 and verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way. In other words, Jesus is what we need. Jesus will keep you. Jesus will preserve you. Jesus is your righteousness. And he will override the old Adam, the old flesh, the old man, the old wicked way. No, you have the spirit of God. You don't have a righteousness that is just based on external things, but a righteousness that is intrinsic. Glory be to God. And that righteousness comes through Christ. Now the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So watch this now. Put it another way. Christ is the righteousness of God in you. So it all depends on your relationship with him. We in all of that. What righteousness. Everything we have, we have it in Christ. Christ is the righteousness of God in us. And he is the way everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me into a deeper relationship with Jesus. 
If you're not saved, the way everlasting is Jesus. If you're not saved, you need to know Jesus. There's more than this life, my friend. There's an eternity to face. And Jesus is the way to the Father. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And the Bible said in John 17, whom to know is life eternal. It's not just knowing about Jesus, but it's knowing Jesus. It is having fellowship with Jesus. We must have daily, especially in these last days, daily fellowship with Jesus the way. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus is the way everlasting. We are concerned about our little temporary space here. But he said if you seek to save your life here, you will lose it. It is that that causes anxiety. James said concerning the church, you wonder how we can say that concerning the church, how we can say that. He said you kill you lost, you desire to have, and you have not. He said that you even pray. But when you pray, you pray amiss, you pray wrongly, that you might consume it upon your loss because you want it, you, you want God to bless you to show off. Lead me in the way everlasting. We gotta get out of the rat race, get out of the ghetto mentality, live for Jesus. Live for Jesus. Live for Jesus. That's what matters. I don't care if you don't get married. I don't care if you don't drive a new car up your alley. I don't care if all you have as a cell phone is a me too. You don't have to have an iPhone 6. Lead me in the way. Oh Lord Jesus. Lead me, lead me, lead me. Lead me in the way everlasting. Not, not temporal. Not temporary. The Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know what that means? We are blessed with redemption. We are blessed with sonship. We are blessed with sanctification. We are blessed with purification. We are blessed with the inward dwelling of the Holy Spirit. We are blessed with the hope and a promise of glorification. And upon that, God still promises to give you your daily bread. So people can have all these nice cars and all these things, but they don't have redemption. They don't have sanctification. They don't have adoption. They don't have redemption. They don't have glorification. They will die and leave everything here. Lead me in the way of everlasting. Help me to look up, oh God. When all around me, people are worried about this, worried about that. Help me to look up. So much more could have been said today, but because of time, I had to stop there. I want to thank all of you that have tuned in from across the Caribbean. You have listened to this message today and probably God has spoken to your heart. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. I also want you to know that there's a heaven and there's a hell. And the big question is, where would you spend eternity? If you're not saved, I want to pray for you. Say this prayer with me from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. I believe you died for me. You rose again from the dead. And today I invite you into my heart as my Savior and as my Lord. Thank you for hearing this prayer for coming into my life and for saving my soul. Give me the strength to serve you until I see you face to face. If you said that prayer, I want you to know God heard you. The Bible says in Romans 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. What you need to do now is get into a good Bible-believing church where you can be nurtured in the word of God and be prepared for water baptism. Again, I want to thank you for viewing Light in the Word. You want to contact us, you can call the number on the screen or you can contact me on Facebook, Bishop Victor Gill, and let us be friends. Keep you in mercy and truth television. God bless you.